Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from VMworld 2015 here in Moscone North. Uh, double set going. This is the director set. I'm excited to have uh, two, two guys I've known for a lot of years, uh, Scott Lowe and David M. Davis uh, with Actual Tech Media. Scott, welcome back to theCUBE. And David, I, it's your first time, isn't it? It is my first time, yeah. Well, uh, we're really excited to have you on. Finally, as I said, you know, both, both of you guys, V-experts, uh, regular participants, uh, people I've known on, on, on Twitter, uh, you know, long before I was doing this gig or anything like that. So thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you, Yeah, Steve. thanks for having us. All right, so, so first thing, Scott. You got a prop here. You got to show us something. I yeah, do. You know, I, I've worked with you, and uh, you, you've been writing a couple of books. But congratulations, <laughs> guys! The latest book. Uh, tell us Thank about you. the Gorilla Guide and what's in this one. So the Gorilla Guide uh, is a new series that Actual Tech Media has launched, with the inaugural book being the Hyperconverged Infrastructure Implementation Strategies Gorilla Guide. Um, this is a completely uh, Actual Tech Media-based publication, from design to publication to writing to everything. Um, and this is the we hope to be the first in um, lots of books. In, in the series. All right, uh, so, so great. So first time we've had you on as part of Actual Tech. Uh, maybe t t tell us a, a little bit about you know, what you guys are doing. Uh, you, you know, what are you creating? What, how are you helping the community? Sure, um, Actual Tech Media is basically a content generation, content marketing, and a demand generation firm. Uh, we work with a lot of companies in the space. Uh, we have managed to work with a lot of hyperconverged infrastructure companies, including uh, you know, the sponsor of our book. Um, we're doing uh, work in the community as far as uh, long-form webinars and helping educate people about some of the trials and tribulations and some of what they're seeing in the market today. Yeah, so, I mean, David, you're, you're, you're no uh, you know, stranger to education of the community. Um, you know, I, I've watched some of your training videos. I think probably everybody in this <laughs> uh, environment has probably watched you. Hey, uh, don't I know you? Aren't you that guy that I watched right. that thing with? Right. Uh, or at least your voice, right? Yeah. So uh, there, can, can you give us just kind of your update is, what have you been seeing the last few years? You know, what stayed the same and what's changed when it comes to educating, especially in the virtualization community? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I really don't see us doing too much you know, different than what I've always done, which is educate people. Uh, we're just doing it in a different way. You know, we're doing doing books and online webinars and stuff. And so, I mean, as far as how things have changed, um, you know, I, I think. Uh, the community's changed, you know, the, the number of the experts, you know, ha has grown. Um, you know, people have, uh, that, that we've known for years, you know, who were admins are now, you know, they moved up to engineers at big companies and now evangelists. And so people have changed roles and the technology, you know, at the same time has changed. You know, the keynote this morning, we're talking uh, cloud hybrid and, you know, Docker and, you know. Um, so there's just a lot more education, you know, especially around hyperconvergence and storage and, uh, everything that's going on there. All right, so I mean, let, let's let's dig into the hyperconvergence stuff. So that's okay. what the new books add. You know, I, I'm pretty familiar with it. Heck, Scott, I I got a really nice compliment from the community saying, you know, hey, there's this article uh, that you and I co-wrote talking about, you know, vSAN, SimpliVity, Nutanix, and how those lined up. And they're like, where do I get more content like this? So, right. you know, where's the conversation that you're seeing? Uh, kind of, you know, top things that people don't understand, or uh, top things that they're they get kind of the you know wow or oh uh, when they they really dig into it. Yeah, and I have a number of th thoughts on that. Number one is that people just don't know where to start. Yeah. Um, you know, they think of hyperconvergence, they look at it, and some of them think it's a return to the past um, because we're back to direct attached storage, um, but some of them see it for what it is, which is basically a leap forward um, in the data center uh, market. Um, but that's where our role is, is to help people figure out what all this stuff means. Um, and I remember that piece because I think it had one of the, it had 25 or 30,000 views on wikibon.org when I last checked. Um, and it was basically a piece that said, here's how all the companies line up. And that's the kind of stuff that's really missing um, from, from the, the conversation today, is how this stuff really works. Yeah, you bring up some great points, because the thing about hyperconverge, it's a nuanced conversation. Because it is. Is, yeah. it a, is a return to the past? Well, it's a pendulum swing. We're going back, but we're, we're pulling storage back into, uh, you know, kind of the compute layer, but it's very different, because it's very much software-led. It's not just, you know, taking a bunch of disks and stick it in a box and, you know, running some cablings right. and things like that. So there's a lot of software, there's a lot of management. Um, it's a, you know, multifaceted environment, and boy, there's a lot 
lot of options now. I interviewed uh, you know yet another startup in this space this morning here, and I feel like every week there's a new company uh, coming up in the space. Well, even a lot of companies that have been traditionally doing other things are jumping into the hyper-converged space now um, because they see the the benefit, potential business benefits, potential te uh, technical benefits from it, um, and it has you know a lot of potentially really good outcomes for organizations. And I think some of the interesting things are that there are so many conversations about it. People, there's arguments over what hyperconverged really means and things like that. Um, if you're really bored on a Friday night, you can get on Twitter and watch people fight about the word hyperconvergence. <laughs> um, you know, but things like that. Server sand, hyperconverged. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we we we've, we've been in way too many of those. I mean. Boy, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's interesting though, I mean, you mentioned David, the keynote this morning. I mean, there's a lot of cloud discussion. Uh, I, I was talking actually to uh, a customer that's using Hyperconverged, uh, and I said to them, you know, when you dis dis discuss your environment, talk about how it simplifies your environment, uh, really creates a platform uh, for the way you can handle it, um, and organizationally, I mean, it sounds almost cloudy. And the customer said, absolutely, that, that's the way I think of it. It's, it's, it's really got to have that management layer uh, and, and take care of it. So I don't think of it as another box in my environment. It is now, you know, it, it's part of my whole cloud strategy. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of see hyperconvergence as almost like virtualization 2.0. You know, I mean, we virtualized the compute. Now we need to virtualize the storage and, and you know, be much more efficient with it, just like we did with, with server virtualization. But yeah, I did some speaking about hyperconvergence, and yeah, one of the questions from the audience was, you know, my CIO says we should just move everything to the cloud. Why don't we just do that instead of you know hyperconvergence? And I think that's that's a very valid question. You know, it depends a lot on the application and the company and uh, a lot of. A lot of things to think about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you go ahead, Scott. I, I, do some have, comments. <laughs> I think what we're seeing, in the meta trend in all this is simplicity. I think we're seeing data centers become far too complex, far too expensive, far too difficult to maintain. There's no longer a desire to maintain a one to one staffing to infrastructure ratio. And people are looking for ways to do things better, faster, cheaper. Yeah. And I think things like hyperconvergence and what we're talked about this morning in the keynote are all means to that end is to help us get to a point where the infrastructure really is a service rather than this mess that we have to constantly manage and try to get upkeep. Yeah, that, 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 that's a critical component. And, and I think, you know, if we talk about, you said virtualization 2.0, well, when, when private cloud first got talked as a term, it's like, well, what's the difference between that and virtualization? Are we just adding some kind of management layer? And we're, we're still working at that management stack. We are. Uh, it was right. kind of my critique this morning if you talk about, you know, the, the unified hybrid cloud strategy out there, well, I've got lots of stuff. I mean, we all know you put something new in the environment, we usually don't sweep the floor and get rid of everything else. And oh, by the way, uh, all your customers, are they using Amazon? Yeah, they're using Amazon. Are they using Office 365 and some of the Azure stuff? Yeah, you better believe they are. So it's, I mean, it's a heterogeneous, multi-cloud, multi-dimensional world. Uh, and that puts a lot of strain on the IT staff yes, if they don't have the right tools. So, I mean, Scott, you, you, you've been in that, that, that role as a CIO. I have. You, uh, you do consulting uh, with, with, with plenty of companies. Um, we said the goal is simplicity, yeah. but if we keep adding all this stuff, are we adding more silos, are we adding complexity, um, or you know, is it really, you know, at the end of the day, is it simpler? I, I think it's going to get simpler. I think that we're in a phase right now where it's, we're going to have to necessarily take some steps that might make, give us some short-term complexity, but the end result is going to be a simpler architecture at the end of the day. I, I mean, Smaller organizations, I think, actually have it easier in some ways in this because they can rip and replace if they really need to. And they can go out and they can burn their data center to the ground this afternoon and put a new infrastructure in tomorrow. Um, but large organizations can't do that. And I think this is one of the reasons we're seeing so much use case focus from a lot of companies now too, helping them figure out a way to get the foot in the door to ultimately start migrating over to something that's simpler in the long run to deal with. All right, so I'm sure you guys like me hear plenty of uh, just kind of, there, there's kind of misconceptions out there about hyperconverged. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes it's almost FUD uh, oh, yeah. as, as to what's going on there. So I wonder if we, we can talk a few about those, what you've really seen. Uh, you know, I, I know some of them are covered in the book there, um, but you know, it isn't hyperconverged, it's just kind of that, you know, mid-range thing for VDI and it's, 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 it's just going to be a yet another silo. There's no way it can replace all my workloads um, right. or handle real applications or anything like that. What, what, what's your findings? Um, I think that's FUD. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we do hear a lot about that from companies, especially legacy vendors that are scared of hyperconvergence because it does bring a lot of different nuances to the equation. But I think that when we start really looking at it more, uh, more deeply, then you're going to see that it really can run your mainstream workloads. Now, I still think that it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to run everything. 
but for mainstream organizations, which is the vast majority of what's out there, I see hyperconvergence as a, uh, a reasonable out, uh, op opportunity for uh, reducing costs, reducing labor, and possibly even, you know, be able to help redirect the IT staff to more business-facing efforts. And that's what, I, you know, is the key to all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, what's been fascinating to me to watch uh, is all these different hyperconvergence companies and, and how they're different. You know, they don't just virtualize the storage and distribute it, but, you know, how, what do they do that's special? You know, and I think it's been a great, you know, competitive thing, market to watch to see how, you know, the one company is doing data protection, the other company offers uh, replication, the other one will throw an OpenStack private cloud on top of it and run Docker, and it's like how many things can they throw into this hyper-convergence solution to, to make it different and make it unique? And in the end, it really all benefits, I think, the customer, you know, to, to have so many options to add on to this, this new solution. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely today, it's not a homogeneous offering from those, you know, got 20 companies yeah. uh, that, that are out there. Um, so I, I guess, you know, you know, what doesn't hyperconverge fit for? I mean, you know, are they they're kind of pieces of the market or areas that you should say, you know, hey, maybe this isn't the best fit today? Yeah, I think there are some things out there, but I think those things are going to eventually get encompassed by growing and more maturing hyperconverged offerings. Yeah. But today, things like major, you know, uh, hyperscale or Hadoop type things, um, anything that massive I.O. needs, like huge analytics or ge genome sequencing, you know, I mean, that kind of stuff. Um, I think that we're going to have troubles with some of those monster, monster VM sort of applications just because of the way that the architectures are built today. But over time, I think that's going to happen, just like we had with virtualization. Yeah. Early on, we couldn't virtualize Exchange. Today, everybody does. Yeah. The same thing's going to happen with hyperconvergence. So it, it's interesting. So David Floyer, Wikibon CTO, has actually written what we consider, um, it's different from today's hyperconverge, but fits under the umbrella of what we call server stand. So it's called right. Flash's memory extension. Because today, uh, absolutely, if this is an HPC, you know, super you know, high environment, that's probably not going to go on the traditional hyperconverge that we have today. But does that mean I put an all-flash array in there, or are there new architectures that are really closer to the compute that really require low latency, really leveraging uh, you know, some, some of the, the newer technologies, maybe it's PCI extension, right. uh, PCIe extension and the like. So uh, you know, the whole you know, pulling it in uh, and having that kind of architecture like, like a hyperconverge you know, shows some promise uh, you know, down the road as to be able to take that to Absolutely. type of Absolutely, and this is really a stepping stone to what's coming. Um, as all Flash and as all the Flash successors continue to jump into the market, I th we're going to see them get, uh, you know, sort of integrated or assimilated into, to, you know, the hyperconverged offerings, and we're going to start seeing the ability to take some of those larger workloads, high performance computing, some of the PCIe extensions, dim, uh, dim socket memory or uh, flash storage and things like that. Um, and really leverage it for new workloads. Yeah, I mean, w w one of the concerns I always have is when people see, you know, something gets released. And maybe they even try it out or look at it and they say, yeah, you know, maybe that's not a fit. 12 months from now, when it's gone through a big rev, they, they don't look at it. So, I mean, look, we know. From my background as a hardware guy, it was like, you know, if you're building a chipset, you probably want to throw out the 1.0 because you don't want to put that in their environment. Right. From a software standpoint, you put it out there. You put it in a test environment you got it. and you mature it out there. Right. We've seen all of these environments, uh, you know, really mature. Um, I, I'm curious your take on that, especially, you know, uh, VMware's come out, you know, big announcement last year with vSAN yep. um, and all the Evo Rail pieces there, which I th think was the rising tied to get everybody talking about this space. It was. I mean, you know, every single company that sells a hyperconverged says, thank goodness VMware did this because it's not the what is that and why might I want to consider they're like, oh, I think I get it because we've got this this wave of marketing. And thanks to people like you guys also helping uh, you know e educate with you know websites and webinars and everything you're doing. But um, you know the the market changes pretty rapidly and people often are like they're thinking about what they heard a year ago or 18 months ago or you know tried it a couple of years ago versus you know what's available today. Right. I I think that if you tried it before and it didn't work. Yeah. You should try it again. Yeah. I mean, the, the cycle and all this stuff, and would you agree with that? Oh yeah, I mean, it's like VDI. It's like saying, well, we tried VDI four years ago, yeah. and it was a flop. You and know? it was, because storage couldn't keep up. Right, Wait, right. David, you're not trying to say that this is the year of VDI, <laughs> Maybe are you? it is. Maybe it's the year of hyperconvergence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, great point is, you know, uh, it, you, know you, you look at the, the drumbeat of Moore's Law, and it makes so many things that, uh, you know, five years ago, you'd be like, I'd never consider doing that to like, right. wow. Um, right. I, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned Hadoop is a workload. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that before, 
If I wasn't Google, there's no way I could do it. Just, I just couldn't afford it. Right. Um, so, Scott, I, I want to bring you, you, you've got a lot of background kind of the, in the SMB marketplace. Mm -hmm. Is hyperconvergence really playing there? How does that fit? Uh, a lot of the solutions seem to be the sweet spot. Add that kind of mid-size to you know, mid-enterprise uh, mm -hmm. market. Uh, what, what about the SMB? I think the SMB, there are solutions out there for them. And I mean, I, I won't name names, but there are specific vendors that are focused on the space on the SMB, and they're killing it. And they should be, because they've got great solutions. Now, it's going to require rethinking a little bit. Um, and it's going to mean that some of the, you never got fired for buying X, you're going to have to have those conversations. Because you know, some of the tier one players, they're the, they're the safety net. But they're not the ones that are doing all the really cool, innovative stuff these days. Um, and the SMB is starting to more and more uh, be the beneficiary of a lot of what's happening um, in, uh, in some of these startups. And we are seeing more companies. I mean, one of my biggest pet peeves is you know, emerging companies that focus on the Fortune 1. I mean, they're looking for that massive customer when there's only 10 of them. And there's hundreds and thousands of SMB and mid-market companies that are screaming for solutions that are affordable, sustainable, and, and that they can actually um, implement in a way that's reasonable. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was a, an IT manager, you know, I came to VMworld for the first time, and yeah, it, it felt like, you know, 80% of the solutions here just weren't for me, right. you know? So uh, I think it's a great feeling to see hyper-conversion solutions that are for smaller, you know, mis businesses, remote offices, you know, things like yep. that. Companies who have a lot of remote locations, you know, they, they don't have uh, high availability for their storage. They don't have you know data protection that they need. You know maybe hyperconvergence can be the thing that they put in that with all these add-on things provides what they really need at an affordable price. Well, it becomes the data center in a box. Exactly. They get rid yeah, of their storage. Yeah. They get rid of their servers. They potentially get rid of having to deal with a separate hypervisor in some cases, and they get a box that does their data center stuff. Right. And they can have a guy that manages it. Yep. And especially in, a, in smaller companies where they have to wear lots of hats. All right. So so. Uh, your, your new book, it's got over 100 pages in there, a uh, lot, of, lot of good pieces, but uh, can, can you maybe, I, I know it's tough to choose, but can, give us a couple examples of uh, you know, key takeaways uh, that tre people should, uh, you know, things that they'll take away from that book. Sure, we, we broke the book into three sections. One is about hyperconvergence, second is use cases, the third is the organizational impact. And I think that's a relatively unique take um, to, the, to the topic. And one, I think two of the chapters that are of most use are the ones about the organizational impact because we talk about what it's going to mean for your staff, because that's a question a lot of people have, is if I get rid of the sand, what happens to my job? And we talk about that in the book. We also talk about how to think about this from an economic perspective, because it's more than just buying the equipment. Um, if you're able to replace a whole rack of stuff with a few units of infrastructure, there's all kinds of uh, electrical and cooling and other opportunities you can start to think about when it comes to economics. Um, you can start to rethink how you scale the environment. So it mm -hmm. starts to let you think, have a different conversation around capital expenditures versus operational expenditures. Um, we talk about those kinds of things in the book. So it goes from technical to sea level to help everybody sort of get a handle on what this really means for the organization. All right, so uh, I think we covered hyperconvergence real well. Last question I have for both of you guys is, other than hyperconverge, what cool stuff are you looking at? What, what, what are you digging into? Where, where, where's kind of the biggest opportunity uh, for, for people to learn more? Uh, you know, besides the book, I mean, I'm interested in, you know, all the new vSphere features, you know, network virtualization, uh, is, it, is it plausible for companies, you know, we're talking a lot here about storage. Is it? That's a good question. <laughs> we're talking a lot here about storage, software-defined storage, you know, but what about the other form of hyperconvergence, software-defined, you know, networking, um, you know, cloud, you know, is it really possible for a lot of companies? So what about you, Scott? Uh, some of the areas that Apple Tech Media is going to be focused on in the next few months are software-defined data center, obviously more on hyper infrastructure because it's changing so fast, um, data protection and security. are. I think security is one of those things that is getting a lot more attention these days with some of the things that's happening in the market. And I think it's interesting, we're starting to see companies bake security into their products, and that's some of the things we're going to tackle at Actual Tech Media. Yeah, and, and even I, I've talked to a couple of companies that have adopted Hyperconverge, and you said, what do I do now that I don't have to touch my box and do as much? Oh, wait, you know the security project that's been sitting on my desk for two yeah. years? Hey, right. I have time and I can actually work on that. You got isn't, it. Isn't that awesome? All right, guys, unfortunately we are out of time. Really appreciate you coming over, sharing your story. Uh, people that know to hit you up on Twitter and the, and the website for Actual Tech is? ActualTechMedia.com. All right, yeah. excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Scott and David. Always a pleasure to chat with you guys, and thank you for sharing with our community. Uh, we appreciate all, all you're doing to help out, educate out there. So Thanks, too. Thank you for watching. Everybody, we'll be back right in a second here with our next guest, wall-to-wall -wall coverage from VMworld 2015. This is theCUBE.